Good evening and welcome to the Arlington School Committee. It is Thursday, February 12, 2015. Uh, I would like to welcome the members, the superintendent, and the administrative staff. I would like to welcome and recognize the Arlington Education Educators President, Ms. Hansen. Welcome. Dr. Ampey will be absent tonight because of personal reasons. Mr. Thielman and Mr. Pierce are delayed because of traffic, and I think we all understand that. This time I would like to direct your attention to the artwork in the room, and we'll begin right here to my right. This is fourth grade line drawings. Rob Lowe, who works under the name Super Mundane, is an artist, illustrator, and designer in Great Britain. Fourth grade students studied his distinctive drawings while learning about line. Super Mundane refers to the style of drawing as obsessive doodles. Looking at his work, students noticed that he created variety by changing his patterns, colors, and the amount of space in between lines. Students picked up on how darker colors come forward and the lighter colors recede into the background. Fourth grade students used Sharpies to create their own obsessive doodle line drawings. They played re with repetition pattern using both organic curvy lines and straight lines. As they worked, they saw that a simple pattern could be repeated into a complex composition. And I apologize, I need to give credit to the students at both the Stratton and Thompson School and the art teacher is Deborah Campagna. Moving down on that same wall, uh, still over to my right, is kindergarten James Rizzi Cityscapes. Kindergarten students looked at the work of James Rizzi. Rizzi was a pop artist best known for his brightly colored cityscapes. Students made a strong connection with his work and his cartoon-like style. Together, we noticed how Rizzi used color, shape, and line to create his lively cities. Students wished they could live in such a colorful place. To create their own cityscape, students first planned by drawing in pencil. They added personality to each building by adding facial features. Finally, students colored their cities. They tried hard to fill the whole page with color and to create a city that is full of joy. In the back of our room, second grade snowman paintings Second grade students were introduced to the value one of the elements of art. Students discussed the way artists use value to create an illusion of three-dimensional space. After experimenting with mixing tints and shades, students used white, blue, and black paint to create nighttime paintings of snowmen. They used tints and shades of blue to create areas of light and shadow. They worked hard at creating the illusion of three-dimensional space and real snowmen. As a final step, students decorated their snowmen with different colors and gave them personalities. And to my right, uh, behind Mr. Schlickman, first grade owl collages. First grade students learned about owls in art class. Looking at photographs of owls, students noticed different shapes, patterns, colors, and textures on each animal. After sharing facts about owls, students were went on creating their own owl collages. Cutting shapes is a skill that many first graders are still developing. While working on their owls, students learned how to cut two shapes at once, and they practiced cutting circles. As a final detail, many students drew lines on their owls, creating the texture of feathers. And our last piece right over here to my right is fifth grade Kuru drawings. Fifth, graders, fifth grade students created these drawings based on the work of artist Raywin, Raywin Harris. Harris is from New Zealand, and her paintings are inspired by the Maori people and the symbol of the koru plant. A koru is a type of fern that grows in the shape of a spiral. The Maori people believe that the spiral, spiral symbolizes the unfolding of new life or a new beginning. The koru spiral features prominently in Harris's work. Her paintings are dense abstractions of nature. After looking at her paintings, students began their own koru designs. They include a spiral and then fill their comp compositions with designs that were inspired by nature. Again, I would like to thank uh, Deborah Campagna and all the students at uh, Thompson and Stratton School for their beautiful work that are gracing our room. Mm -hmm. At this time, we will have uh, public participation. Is there any at this time? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're giggling because there's no one in the audience. Uh, <laughs> At, uh, the superintendent's either. proposed budget will <laughs> now be open for discussion. Dr. Bodie. <coughs> yeah, let's wait till the, this comes down. That's we have yours. a PowerPoint this evening um, that you also have in Novus. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Yeah. Yes, we do. I don't. Um, Hit. Okay. Try F5 and see, or to refresh. Now, this Nova's thing works a lot better on the iPad this. than on the machine. It's in the regular cover sheet is the problem. So All right, well, we'll have it up. Yet. We'll have up here in just a second. Um, oh, here so we are at the point tonight, for those uh, that are listening and may not be as entirely aware of the process that we've been living for the last couple of months, uh, this process of developing the FY16 budget, which is the budget for 2015-16, actually begins in the fall. Uh, the first part of the process is developing a timeline and we are at the point in the timeline when uh, the administration, is called the superintendent's budget, is presented to the, the school committee for consideration. But this is also, as I said, um, on the heels of a lot of discussion that's gone on. In fact, in December, as we all know, the principals um, came and presented what they thought were some of the really high needs. And that was culled from what other needs that they, they also felt but had to prioritize. Um, so there's been discussions at the at building levels, at department levels, and we are at the at the point now of being able to, with more sure numbers, know exactly how many of these things that we're going to be able to fund in, in next year. So tonight, uh, my intent is to just give you an overview, sort of an executive summary of where we are with the budget, what the priorities are, uh, in a in a in a <coughs> 30,000 foot view of the numbers for the budget. For those that are watching, um, they, you can find the link on the, on the website, but I also sent an email to all the parents earlier um, this evening with the link to the budget in case they wanted to follow along. All right, um, all of you know Diane. Diane Fisk Johnson, and uh, she has been working very, very hard on this over the last uh, many months, actually, but intensely in the last month. As we look to uh, the budget for FY16, there are a number of budget priorities I'll just speak to. The first is that we are, we want to successfully conclude negotiations with the uh, Arlington Educator Educators Association, which is our teachers, as well as all of our other unions, all of which have contracts up for renewal this year. One of the things that I mentioned in the, in the, uh, pre the preface to the budget, which is the superintendent's message, is that three years ago when we, we, had an, we had the beginnings of another contract, that was the time when the town went uh, chose with, with the agreement uh, of all of our unions to enter into the GIC, which is the state health program. It was, re it resulted in quite a lot of savings for the town and, and also for teachers with premiums. But I think that we would all agree that the great, there was a great savings that was realized from doing that. And in fact, it was, those savings with addition chapter 70 money that we realized that we didn't expect as well as money from the kindergarten um, uh, being able to no, not charge tuition anymore for kindergarten that we've been able to extend the life of the plan that we had after the last override but as part of that decision there was an agreement made to look at the salaries among a group of what we now call the town managers 12. And so the town under, um, undertook creating a salary study across these 12 communities. And this was both for union and non-union. And at the results of that study, which is again on the website, both the town, and I think there's a link also to it on the, on the school website, that study is, is um, being used in negotiations in this round. Another budget priority is that we want to reduce class sizes at the, at the middle school by having a half cluster next year, which means that that would be two teachers, as well as um, increasing 
one of our tech teachers to full time so that we have three full time technology engineering teachers at the middle school. And it's important to do that because in these classes where they're using um, equipment that needs to be, students need to be very careful using and needs quite a bit of supervision, it is not really ex acceptable to have 30 students in the class. And we do have some classes like that at the middle school. I will say that um, we have extraordinary teachers that are able to manage that, but as we go forward next year and also as enrollment increases at Audison, we do need to increase that. We also need to add an additional high school teacher, and it's not necessarily a teacher, but um, different FTEs depending upon class sizes and student course selections this spring. We're able to maintain five reserve teaching positions in order to respond to enrollment growth um, as we go through the spring and summer. Uh, though I, I, I will say with some caution that last year we also had five reserve positions and those positions were quickly um, needed as we had the enrollment growth that we saw last summer. We also, another budget priority is that we had 2.5 social workers that were funded through a grant which no longer will be a revenue source next year. And so we're incorporated those 2.5 teachers, um, social workers I should say, into the budget. We also need to increase one psychologist position to full time and also the addition of a specialized speech and language assistant to help with caseloads. One of the other things that we've talked about this fall is the need to get our teaching assistant salaries in a more competitive range than they had been. We, we, we began that process the last, um, the last budget cycle, and we've been actually trying to work at that, quite honestly, over the last few years. So what we have done in this budget is move the salary to 17,000, which actually represents a 3.3%. We had hoped to have it actually higher than that, but you'll understand as we look at the numbers why that was not possible. And the last priority has to do with maintenance. Um, as we've talked about this table before, next year we are going to have a a new department in the town, a facilities department, that will consolidate all of the maintenance people and custodians into one department, which in the next year will be fully funded. As we begin this transition, um, our role as a, a school department will be <coughs> to share the cost with the town for having uh, the New, the director's salary as well as administrative uh, support person. So our contribution in the, is it roughly in the area of about 90,000. So these are the main budget priorities as we look at the proposed budget for FY16. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me, uh, can you just go back to the slide on maintenance for one second? We have talked about this, but uh, I do want to emphasize one, a couple of points here. And that is that the purpose of, besides handling all of the maintenance in the town as we currently do, but they're divided in the town and every, every department has their own people, we'll consolidate all of that for greater efficiency. But I think what, the, what everyone is hoping will happen and are, and are planning to make this be successful is to begin the process having long range planning for all of our buildings. We have built buildings and we, we maintain them, but we don't have uh, that kind of planning that has uh, planning where you actually have a schedule for when you do painting and different kinds of repairs. Right now, we're pretty much reacting to the, to the emergency of the moment rather than having a, a plan. Now, that's not to say that emergencies aren't gonna happen, but I think that, uh, the work of this department will be to make sure that we have a long range plan and a, and a maintenance plan. All right, as we look at the current budget, the current budget is about uh, $56.5 million, of which 
it comes from three categories. Unlike the town, we have other uh, sources of revenue for our budget. We have the town appropriation, which of course is the largest amount of money, and some of that money comes from Chapter 70, which is the allocation the state gives for education, but it comes through the general fund of the town. We also have grants. Some of those are competitive grants. Most of them are entitlement grants. And then also we have revolving accounts, which include uh, the different fees that we, we collect. So that represents the total, the, the different revenue sources. Now, when we look at FY16, we're going to see that we're going to be just over $59 million, which gives us a differential of uh, just around uh, $3 million, just shy of $3 million. Now, that would seem like it's a lot of money, but let's take a look at actually how that money will be utilized in FY16. So we have a roughly a net increase in revenue of just under $3 million. However, of that, there's the total mandatory increases, the total costs, are roughly $2.6 million which is just about $300,000 less than what the revenues are. And so what is in that group of mandatory increases? Well, one is that everyone that is currently an employee and all of our other expenses that we've had are rolled over to FY16. Um, and included in that are all of the adjustments that we will make as a result of our, our negotiated settlements with our, with our employees. That will include the COLAs as well as any equity adjustments that might be made. It also represents increases in, in special education costs, particularly out of district out-of-district tuitions and transportation. One of the things that we know is going to happen next year is that we're going to have a new contract with the Collaborative Transportation Group, and very likely that's going to result in an increase. So we've anticipated that. We don't know what the, in what the increase will be, but we've had to in anticipate it in this budget. And the, as I said, the other part of this is that this is increased, the base of where we are now gets rolled over. But the thing I need to remind the committee, and of course you know this, is that last year when we had the, the large enrollment growth over the summer, we increased our base um, quite a bit in order to have teachers in our classrooms and specialists that were needed. So that is our mandatory costs. Now, those budget priorities that I just went through if we were to cost all of those out, it would be a roughly about a million dollars. Well, that would be $700,000 shy of what we have in terms of revenue, so we've actually had to look at what's, what other types of reductions we could take, which is we call the restructuring. And in the, the budget book that you have, there's a, there is a list of all of those reductions that we would be making, and we can talk about those later. Mm -hmm. I, I will also add that in the budget book are the list of the asks that were given this year, both by principals and administrators, and you can see that there's a lot of things that we were not be able to fund in this budget. Now, when, when Diane talks a little bit later about our multi-year plan, uh, we have been thinking about some of the other priorities that we were not able to fund this year and thinking about whether we, can, we would fund them in year two and, and, and even then possibly year three. So we can go through that at some point, but this is right now just sort of a, um, a high level look at this. So but taking those reductions, we are able to put this in proof to our revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, it's always nice to have graphics just to see how, uh, what it looks like visually in terms of what the revenue is. And as you can see, the, the, the vast majority of the income, the revenue, is from town appropriation. <coughs> what we don't have right now is the Chapter 70 number. I know that, uh, I think mm -hmm. Mr. Slickman would like to know the number. We just don't have it yet. 
but it will be a, a part of the town appropriation. And then there's the grants and then the um, revolving fees. In the next graphic, you can see where the major categories that are in the budget book, how those relate to each other in terms of the whole. And one of the things that, you know, probably will catch your attention as well is that the, you know, there's a little bit of equality here, a little bit, still a little bit less, but the cost for special education still are uh, a little bit less in general education, but they are, um, they're still a major, major expenditure of the budget, and, and in rough numbers, you might look at a little bit less than a third there. But I will say, and, and, and um, Ms. Johnson has looked at this, as a percentage of the budget has remained fairly constant uh, throughout the last few years. Are we getting an affirmation on that? Yes, yes. All right. So we are at the point of this presentation where I'm going to turn this over to uh, Ms. Johnson so that she can talk a little bit more about how all this fits in a multi-year plan <coughs> and, um, and just taking a look at some of the, the subsets of the budget. Okay, thank you. Um, I know we've all seen this form before, um, but just to reiterate, this is the long-range projection and how the current budget fits into that. And there are a couple of things to which I'd like to draw your attention. In the bright yellow, the enrollment growth factor, which in prior iterations was a calculation based on our expected number changes, that number now represents what we're putting forth as a proposal in this budget for new ads, as opposed to what we were estimating based on a calculation in prior iterations. <coughs> um, and the um, sort of goldenrod colored salary, salary equity adjustment right here, Oh, that color doesn't show up very well here, does it? I'm sorry. Um, the 475, 479, uh, that's the amount of money that we've set aside to, to do equity adjustments within the budget. As you see in this iteration, we're still counting on 2% for everyone. So this would be salary adjustments on top of that 2%. So the 2% carries forward throughout the plan. But in FY16, those are adjustments that we're going to make to salary um, as a consequence of negotiation. If we look into 17, um, there is also a salary equity adjustment, and that might be a bit of a misnomer. What that is there are two things that we wanted to do that we think are very important, but we just weren't able to fund this year, and that is increasing the kindergarten TAs from half-time to full-time, and increasing the SLCA, the, the substantially separate classroom teaching assistance to the BSP level. We have chronic and persistent problems with retaining staff <coughs> in the SLCs in the teaching assistant role, and so we want to, to make it more competitive by increasing the salary, but we just couldn't squeeze it in this year, but it is in our plan to squeeze it in next <coughs> year. In the out years, we're still calculating enrollment growth factor increases based on a numbers of estimated students, and as you know, those change from year to year. And even though we show a slight deficit in 17, 18, and a little bit more in 19, the numbers in the bright yellow um, here and down here are all numbers that we can work with in future budgets to get to where we need to be based on the number of kids we actually have. The revenues, of course, will shift from the town with the enrollment growth factor. That will continue to reflect changes from the prior year. In FY16, it's right here, 530,069. That was based on the number of students we added over the summer going into this year. And so the numbers on that line as we move forward are projections based on the enrollment <coughs> models that we've been using all along. So there's still a lot of room to flex, but built into these assumptions here are the salary, salary equity adjustments we're contemplating in negotiations to be, and you can see that we can afford to carry those forward based on our current thinking. 
We also in this model have not included increases. We've actually had a decrease in energy costs because we realize we can take some savings from what we've been budgeting traditionally now that we know our actual costs on the new Thompson and other areas where we've saved some money. And maintenance, I'm not increasing their base budget going into next year. Next year, we're going to hand off the budget to them, and it's going to be theirs forevermore. So you see in the, in the light blue, they come out of the budget. We stop increasing them in 16, and they come out of the budget in 17. The salaries come out of the budget in 17. And we also take them out of the revenue base, because the portion of the budget that they will take with them will come right off our town appropriation. Any questions on this? Okay. Um, just to have a few graphs that are a little easier to look at. Uh, you know, Diane, one, one quick question. Sure. <clears throat> Should I go back? No, just quick clarification. You're talking about maintenance, uh, personnel cost, and? Correct. Mm -hmm. All our custodians, all our maintenance people. Not non-personnel costs. Right? They're going to remain with us, right? No, the non-personnel, all of it's going. All of it's going. All of it's going. All right. <laughs> Um, if you look at the five-year comparison, it's a little off kilter this year because right now we have consolidated all of the contract increases into one line rather than spreading them out on a person-by-person -person basis because we have not yet concluded negotiations. We don't know what our tables will look like. We can't actually guess what anybody's salary is precisely going to look like. And so, you know, I struggled with this. Do I show the 2%? Do I march on forward in time? But that's not right. Do I, so I opted to show nothing at all, and all the money, that's how I did it in 13 too. All the money is consolidated under administration for convenience sake, that's but that, say. yeah, that's not, we're not just really like bad. doubling <laughs> down on administrative <laughs> salaries. That's everybody's increases. They're just stored there mm -hmm. for the time being. So when we go back, when we settle, when we put in the salaries person by person for next year, it will spread out and we will see the trends in a much better way. So looking at, it this year at this point in time doesn't show you much because because of that anomaly and staff is the biggest cost throughout the budget did you just was the administration in uh, fy16 yes did you just just address that yes. yes yes okay thank you basically all the money we're planning to give people in increases next year is sitting there mm -hmm. because we haven't decided what it's going to look like for each person so we're not looking to increase administration alone just by that no. Thank you. Well, that's everybody's increases for the that whole district. That will end up going over to all of these. It'll spread out through everybody. Thank but you. in terms of looking at graphs, it makes it look very strange. So. Yes. That's what it looks, yeah. Yeah, no, it looks terrible. $2 million in administration. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. We're just, we're we're just storing the money <laughs> in a big <laughs> pot. <laughs> Putting the money in a big pot until we decide how it's going to be allocate, allocated. Rob got all excited. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I just wanted to say one quick word <coughs> about special education and interventions. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we've started to track separately in the budgets for a couple of years. And I know you're all familiar with it, but it's an important concept to reiterate that we must invest in, in help to students that are struggling and <coughs> do not reach the level of need to qualify for an IEP. It is good for the kids, it is good for the system, and most importantly, from my perspective as the financial person, it's good for our pocketbooks because if we can address children's educational difficulties before they become, before they reach the need for special education, I think everybody's served to the best. So these are important areas and unfortunately in budgeting, they tend to be areas that get cut quickly. Math and, uh, you know, math and reading, you know, enhancements and they're low hanging fruit, they don't affect class size, but in terms of the health, the educational health of the kids, they're really important things and we continue to invest in that. And I flag them because they are, they live in the gray area between regular ed and special ed. And I didn't want to not mention them because they're very important to what special ed spending looks like, but I didn't want to throw them into special ed because that's a little disingenuous and I've wanted to be very consistent in how I talk about SPED so you can see apples to apples over time. Excuse me. Yeah. The mandatory training that the state has required for us for teachers, English second language learners and stuff like that for the teachers, is that in this part of the budget? No, that would be in professional development. Thank you. And I just, this is another chart that shows the interventions expense. And while they're not, relatively speaking, a huge amount of the budget, I think they do have a huge impact in terms of the well being of our students and in the containing of special education costs but mostly they do, they do great things for our kids. 
So that's the overview. Uh, what we're hoping tonight is to have some discussion about these priorities, <coughs> um, discuss questions that you might have about anything that you see in this in the budget, though I realize you haven't had a lot of time to, to do that. And that's why really the, the major part of the discussion will probably occur on February 26th. Our timeline is that that will be a, a major dis budget <coughs> discussion. And then on March 12th, the committee will vote the budget, whatever changes we need to make. We already have a date from the fin Finance Committee to come and present the budget on the 23rd of, uh, of March. So we also have, for people watching, if they would like to come and comment on the budget after they had a chance to, to and sit with it, uh, that will opportunity is at the February 26th meeting from 6.30 to 7.30. So we will have a hearing on the budget. So tonight, maybe the, the discussion might not be into the weeds of the budget as much as in terms of some of the big, the big, bigger picture parts of this. And then if there's anything that you want us to take another look at, um, that's where we need to go tonight. Anybody want to start? Ms. Susan? Um, so I just want to reiterate that we've only seen the budget for I estimate about 31 hours or something, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right. which we're spent sleeping and doing other things. Um, driving Troubling. in the snow. <laughs> driving in the snow, selling girls side cookies. Um, so one thing that jumps out at me is that we have not decided to increase the elementary school um, teachers. And I know that we have these five reserve positions, but, um, but I worry. Numbers? What? Numbers. Oh, no, sorry, about the actual positions. The number mm -hmm. of positions. Uh, number of positions. Uh, so we have, you know, t two positions being added to the <coughs> middle school, one position being added to the high school, and zero to the elementary school as of now. And I, kn I know we have these five reserve positions, but we also probably can assume that we're going to be increasing elementary school um, enrollment. We have a class leaving that has 423 with 19 positions. The classes down low, kindergarten, first grade, have numbers around, hovering around 500, as you know, um, with 23, 22, 21 positions. And I wonder if there's a way, if we should find some way to say, to designate two positions at the elementary level, we know we're going to need them, and keep the reserve positions as truly reserve, something unexpectedly coming up. I mean, I think we can sort of look at it now and say, we just know we're going to need them. What, uh, th that's a great point, and I think that from our point of view that we're, we're thinking that maybe it might end up being all elementary and, and not be as, as readily available to the secondary level. Right now, when I look at all of the classrooms in the district, we don't know what, how they're going to change. So right now, we're going to have the same number of classrooms <coughs> as we have. It's possible that the inclusion of a couple of more students at one grade level at one school is going to force the need of another classroom. Mm -hmm. We don't know that yet. Right. But you know, it, if the committee would like to make, say it's elementary, I think it's too is a safe bet that it's going to be elementary mm -hmm. for sure. Um, we also don't know what's going to happen with the high school um, in terms of, thank you. In terms of the, the choices that the students make as well, um, so we'll have to wait and see how that that plays itself. Is we already know that of that one position, 0.4 of it's going to science, so there isn't that much. So we probably are going to need some of that reserve as well. Mm -hmm. Ms. Starks, um, I have uh, one question. I have is that um, on page uh, 10 and 11, where you've listed out all that section? of the. I don't know. This is in the beginning. I think it says at the top of the page. Uh, superintendent's budget message. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I'm with you. So at line um, 10, we add in. The social workers? Yes, the general funded okay. social workers, and we, we delete the grant funded social workers at the bottom. It's, it is you know, it's, it's, an, it's a wash, and it was a choice of either show the wash this way or don't show them at all. And since everybody was very concerned about the social workers, mm -hmm. I elected to do it this way. It's, it's, 
it's no, in it. Understand though, it seems to me actually that we're quadrupling the count because we're adding them in as an expense, and then we're saying that we're taking we them are as a reduction, restructuring them, and yeah, that's a reduction. Oh, okay, all right. So the reduction, the restructuring are cuts. Yeah. So we're cutting grant-funded social workers and we're adding social workers. So right. it's a wash. Okay, all right. Um, and it, it, there's, there's no way to do it other than to show it okay. in and I out or show it both ways, show okay. it both ways right. or show it no ways. Right. It and I wanted, to show, I wanted to show it, so this is. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, that's it. Mr. Pierce, nothing else. Mr. Schlickman. No, not at this time. Mr. Thielman. I missed the beginning. Did you, Kathy, did you talk about the Metco kindergarten? No, not yet. Yeah. We were going to get to that. We're going to wait and give that news after this. Well, well I can talk a little bit about it since you're bringing it yeah. up. Yeah, okay. This budget here doesn't reflect some reductions that we have just literally learned about. Um, today? Today. We got the number on the kindergarten grant today. Right, so right. I was wondering what the... Is that it, it, but it's not incorporated. It's not incorporated, incorporated there. It's not incorporated in the monthly reports. Oh, it's going to impact this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So. Well, do you want to give them the number? It's, it's roughly $50,000, one, one full-time teacher. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we can absorb. It's yeah. Important. Well, I'd like to suggest something. Well, you know, I th wait a minute. Oh, go ahead. For the sake of the public, we need to, they need to know what we're talking about. Go okay. uh -huh. So the governor, could you just explain? The go the, um, <coughs> back in December, we know that there's a deficit in the state, and, and Governor Patrick recommended some 9C reductions to cover the deficit. Now that Governor uh, Baker is here, he has increased the number, increased and extended the number of reductions. And the two that affect us the most are the kindergarten grant. The kindergarten grant pays for, I think, all but, I think all but one or two of our half-time kindergarten teaching assistants and some professional development money. Um, a little bit of materials, but not much. We, that, that grant's been going down every year. So that's how we rely on being able to provide teaching assistance. They've now cut it for this year. That's what a 9C cut, it's this year, $50,000. So we have to figure out to absorb that, which will have to obviously come out of one of the uh, uh, revolving accounts. So, but we don't know if it's going to be restored next year. Right. That's the problem. The other big cut, and it's much more than Governor uh, Patrick had done, is, that, is Medco. We thought that there was going to be about a 5% reduction back in December for this year, and another another 5% has been suggested just in the last couple days. In fact, there was a meeting at the State House today on this very topic. So that's a 10% reduction, which is quite a bit. And again, if it goes into next year, what is that going to mean in terms of, um, you know, the support? Yes. Okay. So that's in our. Okay. It's, it's not in there at all. All right, it's not in there at all. No. And well, thank you for that update. The other thing is they. Um, you know, in our presentation, it says increased, but in, increases desire, but not funded for FY16. I'm looking at mm -hmm. page nine. It would wow! Look at that. <laughs> uh, it would be good to. Uh, it might be good. Do we list these anywhere in here? Yeah, they're on page 13 they're of the superintendent's two. budget message, section two. Ah. Mm -hmm. What what section? Section two. Uh, section two. It's on page 13, right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. We captured all of that was discussed um, right. with the principals and actually at the budget subcommittee and even at this table. You're way ahead of me then. Oh, <laughs> voila. Okay. Good job. You got it done. I asked for it in two minutes later. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. All set? I have no more questions. Uh, I'm going to have a question, but going back to the, the kindergarten thing, uh, and I'm very simplifying it when we got the cha additional chapter 70 money it came out on an annual basis for the additional kindergarten going from half time to full time several years ago <clears throat> came to approximately 1.4 million dollars a year hmm. plus we see 900,000 of it I'm using rough numbers okay. Okay. the town has had that extra money I think it's really great if we're going to now I'd, I'd, I guess I'm asking the committee and I'm suggesting the committee suggest to the superintendent to, to negotiate some talks to the town that if we're getting cuts in grant money, that we look to get a little piece of that m extra money back. We, well, at least to because our kindergarten students going full time 
generate approximately yeah. four to five hundred thousand dollars additional money that the town would never have got gotten in that. That was part of our agreement. We're now being cut in grant money in kindergarten. Just to ask the town, they've been good to us before with the additional students, to give us a little bit back to help us offset that. I accept the fact that we may be able to find it, but when we find it, we have to, something gets hurt mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. And, and looking at that, I would also ask, I did it immediately as soon as I found out about these potential cuts from the governor, the legislator, and, and they have to go. I contacted uh, <laughs> Representative Garbley and Rogers and Senator Donnelly mm -hmm. to ask them to please stop this right away. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we constantly are very passive and take these hits, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to go forward. I have a question on the current budget going forward. Our legal expenses, 200,000, 400,000, uh, have been constant over several years. We're finished with the major litigation. I'm not looking to revisit that. I don't, mm -hmm. we have not expended that kind of money uh, over the past year. I, I think that's an area we need to look at uh, is, is a possible savings or reallocating that money in, in the budget. We've consistently put 200 and $400,000 in this over the period. We're not even close to that. And in fact, from what I've seen so far this year, we've even spent a little, uh, considerable amount less in, in several of the years. And I thank all those people that are involved in that from our side. Um, that's, again, going back to what uh, Dr. Sue said earlier, we've just had a short time to look at this. I'm sure you're gonna get yeah. a lot more questions in the near future. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, I have one more small question. Um, so I don't, this is in section one, the graph, um, the five-year comparisons. Um, the one thing I noticed that went down a little are these early interventions, which I know we value very highly. And I was wondering, is that based on particular staff, or is it, what is well, the? Well, remember, it looks funny because you're not seeing the normal increases. Mm -hmm. okay. And so if there was, you know, absent the normal increases, and if there is potentially any turnover, mm -hmm. if we had a more experienced reading teacher <coughs> leave and a less experienced one come in, they'd cost less. I see. So, so that doesn't necessarily represent shrinkage in services. It could okay. just represent staff turnover. Okay, good. It's, you know, the, the absence of the normal progression of salaries <coughs> makes everything look weird. Right, right. I, I was also actually wondering, given that that other graph where, that shows the administration costs so high um, looks, you know, scary or something, but um, if we could have a better breakdown of, and I know it's all estimates and not very, you know, of what what's exactly going on there. So for example, if a member of the public were to contact us and say, what's going on with this graph? It looks bad. We could have a explanation, a better explanation. The and explanation I know is, is that all potential contract settlements are sitting in that line right now, and, and I do state so in the narratives at each of these sections. Right, so we can't have a breakdown of those Correct. guesstimates of what Correct. they're looking no. at? No. Not yet, okay. No. But once it's all settled, mm -hmm. it, it will go from there back to where it belongs, and you'll be able to see the salary increases on a person-by-person -person basis. Right. And I think at that time, we'll make a public statement that that chat has been readjusted. I think it's a good point. Right, it just, I was just wondering, if, I mean, someone contacts yeah. me tomorrow, I'd like to be able to say something more detailed than that general. I can't. The only okay. thing we can say at this time is we're negotiating. We're negotiating. Oh, okay. Right. The details. <laughs> Set aside for negotiating. Okay, okay. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Um, half, half a cluster for seventh grade is being uh, proposed. Um, a full cluster sixth grade this year was made, right? So why not a full, wouldn't there a full one needed to be made for seventh grade? Well, probably that could be an argument. It's, it's an issue of two things right now. Uh, one, of course, is the budget. And another issue is space. We, we, are, we have a plan for next year with space and we, we anticipate that we're probably going to have to add another half cluster, if not a whole cluster, we'll just see, wait and see, the following year. And then we have a plan for how that will happen and then also going the years out. So we're increasing um, the numbers. I, I think that when you look at it in ratios, you'll find that it's really not that much different than what the sixth grade did. They're gonna be a little bit larger classes, larger clusters than they had in sixth grade, but not uh, unreasonably so. And is the sixth grade for next year going to have the? Four. Four? Mm -hmm. They'll keep the four. They'll keep the four? Mm -hmm. Okay, and just a couple follow-ups which don't pertain to clusters. Um, but on page 
on the on the funding summary under grants. I'm wondering whatever happened with American history and Mandarin. Where did they, they go? They went away. They ended. They they ended. But did we did we continue them? Teaching American history was a competitive federal direct federal grant. Right. And we so got it, and it's gone. And project success is going away. Right. So those are three-year shots, basically, and then they're done. We still teach American history, though. But teach, but this specific teaching American history grant was for? It was for professional development and for the enhancement of the teaching of history. It wasn't a curriculum for the students, per se? Not, not no. OK. Well, a little bit. We it was did enhancement. Buy some it was we enrichment. We did buy some kits in the elementary with it, the, um, for the social studies. But most of it was for professional development. And it was I a see. shared grant with this group of other communities. And in, in, in that genre, um, Miss Dunn's position and, and who's going to become the next Miss Dunn, hopefully someone soon, what, where do we stand on that and is that in the budget? It is. Okay. It, it's fully funded. Okay. You know, it, with the expectation that it'll be folded, filled at a 1.0. That's carried forward in the base. The fact that she's not in it, the position still is there. Do you, do you, would yeah. you like Mr. Spiegel to speak to that? The position's posted. Okay, great. We're still soliciting applications, <laughs> and we are reviewing the applications as they come in and hope to begin maybe soon after the break to set up interviews and bring people in uh, for interviews. Okay. So, and we have a committee that we're forming with AEA representatives member from the different, uh, from the department. Great. I'm just curious. Why are AEA involved since it's an AAA well, position? Because under the AEA contract for any administrative positions that that's affects right. AEA, right. they yeah. have a that's right. Im seats at the involved table. Involved in it. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's pretty important to get teacher input on Yeah, we want teacher input on, <laughs> on, <laughs> on, on, just, on, on that. Um, sure. Elsa? Uh, um, just sorry, Mandarin. That we, we, we stopped getting the Mandarin grant, but we're still offering it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we absorbed, we, we absorbed the course into the base. Okay, thanks. Several years ago, we started putting in the five reserve positions in anticipation of need. Last year, this current year and last year, we're just barely halfway through the year and they're gone, right? Well, <coughs> well or pretty close to it. Last and, May, they were gone. Okay, last May, that makes it worse. The concept of five reserve positions, they're not reserve anymore. They're, they're being absorbed very quickly by population and programs and stuff. I can appreciate understanding what the structure of programs and classes is going to be at the secondary level, but our, a lot of these positions get absorbed at the elementary level, don't they? Mostly. Mm -hmm. Right, and of course the, 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 the wild card in all this, you want to call it that, is what's going to happen with kindergarten enrollment. Okay. And that process, I'm going to talk about in the superintendent's report, begins in March. Okay. Going along with Dr. Seuss just said, perhaps this is something, and, and you're going to hear me spend that legal money a thousand ways, uh, more, more ways than once. But that may need to be a priority. Our class sizes, from my perspective as a teacher, are very high. Uh, they're doable, the teachers are functioning, but we're at a breaking point. And so I'd like you to think about that. Again, space, again, is a premium. If we had all the money in the world, where we're going to put these classes and stuff, that becomes another thing. So thank you. We all set to move on? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. You'll be hearing more of us. Uh, monthly financial report. Ms. Johnson? Um, yes, let me. It's so odd. As much as I love my iPad, the, the not flipping to the report is. Here we go. Um, we are continuing along. We are beginning to realize a bit of savings. Uh, a month ago, we were looking prettier for savings, but then snow happened. And uh, while we've had many snow days, which are actually less, less fiscally impactful than, than days when we struggle to get open because we don't have to pay as much overtime, we can pay them on straight time to come in and work um, to remove the snow. It's still gonna. It's still gonna take a bite. I mean, we're you know the storm coming in Saturday, Sunday. We've got to get the building open, and and if it's of such a massive quantity that they can't wait until Monday to, or Tuesday to come in and work on it, you know, and then more snow again on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just uh, doesn't quit. But as uh, as uh, Chairman Hayner pointed out, we are tracking very well in the legal line, and um, and so far we're tracking under budget and out of uh, out of district special ed tuition. And my hope is if we continue to hold the line we're on at present, 
that we should be able to go to town meeting and ask for some money to be moved back into the special ed reserve. Um, I think we should really work to keep out of district tuition sort of a standalone area of the budget so that when we budget it and if we have uh, a savings that we should move that into that reserve at town hall and so we have it for lean years when we have a bad year like last year. So even if we still have to use our reserves to cover the deficit as a whole, mm -hmm. I'd still like to move that money from special ed back into the reserve. Just go through up the line. You're right. So I, to clarify, right now we're showing we're 388,283 over budget. Yes. And that's going to be made up by just to, to, so I understand you get to be made up by going in by, by how's it going to be made up again by out of the um, uh, the reserves that we currently have other reserves that we currently have okay. unless we can realize further savings as we go through the year which is possible it is possible yes because with some positions we haven't been filled correct I me mean, the there's positions that haven't been filled we are not tapping the legal line to an excessive degree I mean, that's all accounted for in here and not completely no not no. completely I'm still projecting fairly conservatively that we could in fact spend things that we may not but it's looking at this point in the year like we will not, but I'm not ready to call it yet until we get out of this winter because that could yeah, be. Yeah, right. No, that's a good move. That's a real joker. So. Okay. Um, line 81316, vacation. That is a line. I've never seen it before. Maybe it's been there. It's been there all along. It's, um, it's for maintenance and custodial. We're trying to track their different types of <clears throat> Um, th their salary is tracked. They're in a different union right, structure. No, I understand. I understand so that's, that's for the vacation. It's, I, it's just for them. It's for custodial and maintenance. Okay. It's not for anybody else. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you your business, but we know how much vacation time they have accrued. I, I, I don't know. We are moving into tracking the, these expenses okay. in more detail than we did previously, and so we haven't quite caught up with getting the budgets to true out with them. Two lines down: teaching, moving allowance. Uh, you budgeted 1000 I can appreciate that. We I'm having difficulty opening okay. it. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. it's 81318? 81318, yes. Uh, yeah, I never budget that adequately. That That's almost 40 teachers uh, moving. Yes. We had that many teachers moving classrooms yeah. this year? That's about right, right? That's almost well, like... It's, it's, they, they, it, you know, every time a teacher mo relocates a classroom, you know, every time we have to shift things around. Even if it's from one room to the next room in the same building? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, the longevity of the custodial. Now that's something we should be on top of right away, knowing exactly. Right, they, we just started sp splitting out longevity custodial from long, there's another longevity code for maintenance. And no, that's, I'm sorry, I'm mis I misspoke. It's clothing allowance that, that the budget is, I think I finally consolidated those two lines. But you're right, we will be better on top of the longevity right. custodial. I mean, you, you know who's, who's going where and yep. when. And um, it says pensions, expense will be moved. That is, those are grant related little dribs and drabs of pensions that we have to make up. When we get a state grant, um, a, part, a portion of, when we have teacher salaries in a state grant, a portion of the grant goes directly to MTRS, but we have to make up the difference. And as you come to the end of a grant, there can be little tweaks, you know, you planned on this teacher and it ended up being that teacher and there's little ups and downs. And so we keep this line in here to sort of true out those grants at the end of the year. It ends up being fairly small money. Okay. But it's it, it basically just, just a way to, to just balance out our moved, grants. Just as no. yeah. uh, You want to follow up on that one? No. Nope. Okay. And my last one is uh, line 87601. Again, uh, it says court judgments, damage, and settlements. <clears throat> We've just had a discussion anticipating things are down, and you're saying it's <coughs> estimating at budget. I'm still estimating you're, conservatively. You're conservative. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I no, I don't. There's that. nothing in the offing there's that I'm aware of. There's nothing in the offing. Good. Yeah, <laughs> something no. I didn't. Know I'm about. just, I'm just playing it safe for now. Fine. I can. We're looking to have that all, most of that money back. I'm hoping so. Okay, Mr. Pierce first, and then Mr. Thank you. Eight three zero four athletic uh, services, and with, with the fees we're charging, the fact that we're estimating over budget over fifty grand, what? Why, why, why on that? Because it costs a lot more to run athletics than we've traditionally budgeted for. It's taken some time under the new athletic director to get a handle on exactly how much it really costs to run our athletic program, and it's significantly more than we budget for and certainly more than fees cover. 
I understand that it's always more than fees cover, but we always plan accordingly with, with the budget. No, we really haven't when it comes to athletics because there's been a lot of, there's been change in leadership and there's been a lot of confusion. I've had a really hard time understanding what exactly was needed. And so we, the, you know, we've had the new athletic director, you know, really get in there, tell us what we really need to do it, show me what, what's needed. And so what we've seen is that it went significantly over budget last year mm -hmm. and it's slated to, you know, she's trying to bring it in for the spring, but it's... It was over 52 last year? Oh, yeah. Is this something that she can do a presentation for us, Dr. Bodie, in the future? She uh, can, but given... When, when she gets it all together. So I think this is important with our history of uh, fees and things like this to let the public know exactly what we're doing and mm -hmm. how, what the fees... We, we have a, a general idea of what the fees are. We're comfortable with that. But to let everybody know where what each dollar is going for and where it's coming from and things of that nature. Yeah, because I, I was under the impression that at least this year, last year too, the gate revenues were up. They are, but I mean, up gate revenues is at best ten thousand dollars. Okay. I mean, the cost and of that's athletics is, is for high. In this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's a very expensive proposition. There's many, many, many staff. Um, you know, we're in negotiations about what they're going to be paid. You know, there's a there's a lot of stuff there. We need, oh. we need to have a presentation on this. Yeah, yeah. Once, um, it, once it's done. That would be great. Yeah. Um, now, uh, just a, a quick question, uh, not athletics, but for HVAC contracted service, 82412, right? We're estimating mm -hmm. over probably because mm -hmm. of the weather or the design? No, actually, one of the things that's been very interesting is that at the Pierce School, we've demoed a new uh, fault detection system. Uh -huh. It's a software that is able to monitor various systems in the building and see where there's a problem which is different than an energy management system that says, you know, the energy management system says, turn the lights on at such and such a time, turn them off at this time. The fault detection system says, gee whiz, this classroom is five degrees above where it should be. And then it starts running through things and says, why? And what we're discovering through piloting the software that's been mostly covered by other folks that wanted to test it out in, in this kind of an environment, um, what we've been allowed to see is that there's dysfunctions in the way systems have been set up. And when we discover this at the Pierce where we're doing this, we run around and check all the other schools to see. And so we've got the HVAC contractor running up and down in town like a crazy person, um, fixing all these things that we had no idea. For example, the chiller we put in at the Pierce, uh -huh. when the engineers put it in, they set, the, they set the temperature differential for like a half a degree of swing, which means the darn thing is working constantly. You know, that's how you'd set a lab where, you know, you had medical things that had to be kept at a perfect temperature. A school can certainly swing, you know, five or ten degrees. It's not the end of the world. But they didn't set it that way. They set it to like that, and so the thing is running and running. Mm -hmm. And the fault detection software allowed us to catch that. And now we've reset it, and we're saving money. It's not running as hard, and we'll get a longer life out of that chiller. So every time we find out something at the pierce through this fault detection, we run around and check all the other buildings. Oh. It's great. Yeah, it's great. It's great for the health of our buildings. It's great for our long-term energy savings. But the short-term cost. But it's short-term. It's a little expensive with our HVAC guy who's running around doing all this stuff. Now that will come out of our budget. All that will. Mm -hmm. That's that, all going okay. away. Okay. Both the ex Both. the additional expense and the savings. Right. Right now we're taking we're reaping the savings of it, and that's that's a big chunk of what we're restructuring, what we're cutting out of the budget is savings we're taking in the energy line. So we're getting hit this year, but the town will hopefully recoup the savings next year. <laughs> well, we're getting the savings this year. So. Oh, we are? Because? Yes. yes. Okay. We're, still we're, paying, we're taking we're a big bucket. Next year we'll get half of it because we're paying half of it. No, I think, I think the way it's going to work is that the expenses that are covered in our budget this year will be covered next year. Okay. And then both the expenses and the money will go okay. off with oh, them. Thank you. Dr. Seuss. Um, I'm worried that this might have already been answered, but um, the power electricity, uh, this is uh, 82103. Mm -hmm. uh, it says uh, expense will be moved. Is this being moved? Yes, we've always budgeted um, utilities is paid out of other sources. The main other source is the revolving fund for building rental. Okay, so it's we're still keeping it in our budget. And, and actually, my concern is when we put solar panels on, I want to realize the savings here. Yeah, right, it's I not going to happen. It, by the time that happens, it's all going to belong to the maintenance department. But you can rest assured yeah. that okay. the savings that was the question. Okay. The, the savings from those panels will go into making sure that we get painted more often and our buildings right, are kept it won't up better. Directly go to right. Us. I won't be able to mine it to buy Got computer it. equipment, but oh. it will do good for the buildings, which okay. will help us too. Okay. Okay. Well said. Okay. Uh, statement of interest in the Stratton Elementary. Has that been written? Well, actually, it is written, but. 
Uh, what's happened is uh, both uh, Diane and I have had um, several phone calls with the MSBA, mm -hmm. and it became very clear that this project was not going to be qualify under accelerated repair. When we had the we had the the monies prior to this for Stratton, that was under a different program completely. It was kind of the green repair, which was, was entirely independent of anything else you did. There were, and I don't. It's just it's again it's one of those programs that no longer exists. In the accelerated repair program, um, they still it's windows, uh, boilers, and roof. Got it. But here's the but: if you're doing more, that's going to be a much bigger project, and you're going to be kicking in um, sprinkler system or any ADA, and the project is bigger. What will happen is that they will say you're not really eligible for this program. You're eligible for some support, but you have to go into what they call the core program, which is exactly what we're doing for the high school. It's the it's the rebuild renovation. But the directors from MSBA this year have been very clear to, di to districts. You have to prioritize, your, you have to prioritize your, your core submissions. And so we could submit Stratton under the core, but I think that we all agree the first priority is the high school. Mm -hmm. So what that would mean is that our first priority, so we'd have to wait till we, the high school was, was um, admitted into the program, Stratton would be years down the road because it would, be, it would have to be subsequent to the high school. So what we've had a lot of discussions at the town uh, level and we have all come collectively to the decision that it, it makes much more sense to go forward as had, how the planning had gone on for funding Stratton so that it can be done. And the savings would have been not I mean, it would have been wonderful to have some of the, the savings, which we estimated in the four to 600000 but uh, in terms of the whole cost of the project, when it would get done, the timeliness of it, that's the other piece. If you, even if you got into it and it was your only priority, uh, there's a whole process you have to follow, the same process we went mm -hmm. through at Thompson. We would not be shovel ready June 16. That's not, that wouldn't happen. So there were a lot of things, we had a lot of discussion about it, and this was a collective, collective decision, and um, we go forward, and it's, we will we'll continue to work on the, our, our, the Arlington High School SOI, so it's submitted in April. So that's where that stands. Actually, Diane wrote the SOI for Stratton, but it's unfortunately not gonna. Could we, when you get the SOI completed prior to submission for the high school, would you Disseminated among the staff. I did send it out to. Um, yeah, she sent it to I sent it. I think I sent it out to the facilities committee. Yeah. It, oh. oh. Okay. okay. We can send it out to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can send it out to everybody. Are you going to yeah. send it out to everybody? Yeah. Sure. Just, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. We're, we're happy. To, we want more eyes on it. Take another look at it. We want to see if there's anything else. We have, you know, some other data we can put in, particularly enrollment. That's going to be the key. Also. And oh, and what? Excuse me. One more thing on that is that. We, well, we'll need to complete it so that we schedule the votes. We have to go through the voting process again, Board of Selectmen, right. the, the school committee. So that's, that's in the works as well. Provide us a timeline for that so that we can be prepared for it. That sounds great. Okay, superintendent's report. Two and a half minutes. <laughs> um, okay. Actually, I have quite a few things. I already, I already warned this. She morning. already warned me. Already. Well, the first is the weather. This has just been extraordinary. Um, mm -hmm. I love the word historic because that's really what it has been like. And I have to give so much credit to Mike Rademacher and the DPW, but, but our own staff have been amazing as well. Um, Mark Miano, Jeremy Brandle, who is our head custodian, organizing all of our custodians and maintenance people to just stay with the storm, uh, keeping our uh, keeping our parking lots cleared, uh, keeping walkways cleared. Uh, DPW has been helpful. The other day, when we the second the second snow day this week, they loaned us a f um, one of the front loaders they had. I always say that front end loaders. Front end loaders. 
so that we could even push back the parking lots a little bit more. We, we were losing in all the parking lots through these storms, 10 spaces, 15 spaces, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. And with the front end loader, we were able to retrieve about half of them. But that was a, a lot of teamwork um, between our staff and DPW, and they, they really did, did well, and they're exhausted. Uh, they've been working around the clock, and of course, I'm sure they must be just groaning when they hear there's another big storm coming in this weekend. We're gonna have a big push on this uh, in terms of the storm because one of the things that it did happen with all these snow events is that a number of athletic events were canceled. Mm -hmm. And we're getting toward the end of the season, and even though MIA has pushed back the season deadline a little bit, mm -hmm. not a lot, uh, we have a lot of makeup games. And some of them are Monday, so we're really mm -hmm. gonna be pushing to have that high school be a top priority on Monday. One of, the, one of the concerns I know that I've heard from our parents is something that we were, we were talking about at the beginning of the week, actually last week, uh, the state of our roofs. And you should know that, you know, just from, as soon as the storms ended, we were, that was something that was going on simultaneously to all of this. And we've had um, this week five people going around to the different roofs, shoveling them. One of the things that was actually turned out, which was, beneficial is that with the wind a, a lot of the flat roofs actually don't have much snow in the middle of them mm -hmm. there's there are more drifts toward the the perimeters against the walls mm -hmm. but those are all being taken uh, being reduced on a priority basis so Mark Miano's had a priority in terms of which roofs are the most um, possibly vulnerable though we the newer schools are in good shape mm -hmm. um, there I'm, I think the concern is of course will be in all in schools and I know it's actually it's already existed over town hall and some of the you know that there's leaks you get these these ice dams and then it backs in and that it actually has been the the town offices mm -hmm. that have had more problems than the schools in the last uh, last week mm -hmm. so we, we are do, we are working on that <coughs> and uh, one of the other pieces and you've seen from my notes home and, and certainly our staff has there's an on-street parking ban and cars that were parked that are not on Mass Ave or Broadway, those are the two exceptions, will be ticketed and mm -hmm. potentially towed. Which that, what is meant for the school department mm -hmm. is that we have to make sure that um, all of our teachers can park on site, which even with no snow is not always possible. In fact, at some schools, not half the teachers will be parking on the streets. So with Chief Jefferson, we've worked out arrangements how to use some fire lane spaces and double parking mm -hmm. in all of the lots, and we've been able to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's working out, and everybody is trying to remain mm -hmm. cheerful <laughs> as they deal with this. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, what's, that's where we are right now with uh, the weather. And I don't know if anybody, before I go on to any other part of this, I don't know if anybody has any questions about where we stand right now. Well, let me just, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Let me just ask, how many snow days have we used, and what's our projected last day at right at this point? We have used six, and thank you for mentioning. I should have mentioned that too. Um, <coughs> that puts us at June 25th, which is a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, we have used six days. We've gone past our scheduled five. Mm -hmm. What our constraint is, is that we can't go past June 30th. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of more days. We have, um, mm -hmm. is June 25th the Thursday? It's a Thursday. 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 I, thought we're I knew there was three days. Yes, it's the Thursday. It's mm -hmm. 25th. It's the Thursday. So, so we have three days, three days more that we have snow days before we have to consider vacations mm -hmm. or, some, or Saturdays or something. So we'll, uh, that's something that will go out, a message that will go out. We'll just see what happens when we get back from vacation and if, see if we have any more snow days. When we, st when we start having mm -hmm. to think about this, what I'm going to encourage parents and staff to do is think about trip insurance mm -hmm. for the April vacation. I'd like just to also consider next year's calendar is even that much further. We would be at the 30th of June right now we had six days next year. Uh, That's it's, right. it's really, really, 
It's that much more next year. We might not have any snow days next year. This is an unusual year. Mm -hmm. No question about it. It's, it's, you know, when you look at the, um, the weather channels, you can see they have all these historic dates. It doesn't happen every year, but I have noticed, if you've noticed that, that list, that the time difference between these major events in terms of major years is narrowing. And so I don't know if that's climate change, I don't know what it is, but we may, we can't say, oh, well, we won't have this again for a few more years. Mm. That's not necessarily yeah. the way it's gonna be. Mm. We'll have a better chance of having a drop in kindergarten enrollment for mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway. Well, speaking of kindergarten. <coughs> nice segue. <laughs> that, that was a good segue. Well done. Uh, we, we've sent letters home to, to everyone that has a child registered to us, not registered, but um, and known to us through the census. And uh, we've sent those letters out. Registration begins on March 3rd and all of the dates. So pretty much the registrations happen through March. There's a snow day March 18th. <coughs> now, mm -hmm. this is going to be something we may, it's gonna be a little more challenging than we perhaps thought about when we put the schedule together because it begins March 2nd. Uh, the town manager thinks that the, t the parking ban could be in effect for some time. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, if we have another foot this weekend, we are in, <coughs> gonna be, have some very constrained mm -hmm. situation in town for a while. So, mm -hmm. we may have to change the times or do something because the registration occurs here at the high school and this, there is parking out in Mass Ave, which is fortunate, but parking will be an issue mm -hmm. through this process. When we do you do any other type of communication besides what's on the census as far as newspaper or uh, yes I don't know if you go to the A-list or something like that uh, no well I understand <laughs> get a surrogate to do that necessarily but uh, just so that we can encompass as many people so we don't have those late people coming in in the week before school starts <laughs> and stuff like that it's going to happen but we had an awful lot last year, I think. This, this turns out the census is not a good predictor mm. of the number of students at all. We had a lot of people who were on the census that didn't register, and we had a lot of people, obviously, after that did. But yes, we're trying, we're trying to get the information out in as many venues as possible. And we probably should get this mm. into the library, the children's room there. Yeah. Um, mm. So that will, be a, that will be a big effort right after, right after vacation. Yes. Actually, on, on that, um, last year you had talked that, mentioned that other towns use a slightly different forecasting model, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if we were going to explore um, alternative modeling, perhaps there's well, a program a, or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good question. Actually, um, it's actually Lexington, Lexington has okay. done a modeling which looks at actually who lives in the, the enrollments, or I should say the number of students in condos mm -hmm. versus single family. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to know whether that model will work for us because one of the things they found in their study is that for 10 years, the number of, there was virtually no change in the net for single family homes. Mm -hmm. All of their growth was in condos. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't been true in Arlington. So this uh, is We've not had a lot of growth in single family and you know, rent rentals and so but it's definitely something to look at okay yeah okay today we sent out a, a press release and not that I'll read the whole press release but uh, I really want to acknowledge um, our technology teacher Brandy Whitney at the middle school um, she with Gary Blanchett first of all as you remember earlier this year were recognized by the um, recognized as mass tech program of the year so they were they were the best technology program in the state this year at the middle school level and Brandy Whitney has just been uh, recognized nationally uh, and this is uh, the Pasco stem educator awards 
from PASCO Scientific, which is in partnership with the National Science Teacher Association. And mm -hmm. in, in this recognition, she's going to go to the conference in Chicago, all expenses paid to, to do that with a stipend. So she, it's mm -hmm. extraordinary. And I think it's really important for people to understand the quality of teaching that goes on all of our schools. But th this program in particular is, is quite outstanding. So congratulations to, to Whitney. And um, I also have some congratulations for athletics. We've actually had an amazing season. Um, our wrestling team mm -hmm. has done really well. Now, they, they, there's, there's the league championship in the state through the MIA process, but there also is there's an interscholastic wrestling coaches association and they run mm -hmm. um, wrestling competitions as well. And in fact, mm -hmm. there's 150 teams that um, entered and at different, at different levels, D just like MIA, there's like a division one, division two. So in division, division two, um, they were, mm -hmm. they're, they, they, beca they were, they beat the number one and two seeds to win the Massachusetts Interscholastic mm -hmm. Championship. And right now, uh, they're currently rate, uh, ranked third in the state in Division Two, So they're doing really, really well. Our basketball team has been undefeated. So now, <laughs> we are going to be having the, the, the poor kids, boys and girls, are going to have like five in a row, but they're doing, they're doing <coughs> really well. And uh, one of our, one of our uh, players, Miles Robinson, is just 10 points away from joining the elite 1,000 point club. So um, you can look on the, the athletic website if you wanna see any of the games, if you're mm -hmm. really getting stare crazy at home this next week with your kids, mm -hmm. come to some basketball games. <laughs> Cause they're gonna be in hockey. We're gonna have a lot of hockey games next week as well. Um, let me actually just break here since you've been hearing me talk so much. Let me ask, um, Dr. Chess, and can you talk a little bit about the technology plan and the forums and where we're going with that? Sure. Um, so we have posted on the website uh, a draft of the technology plan. Uh, it is not significantly different from the technology plan that we have um, been working on over the last couple years, but we wanted to um, have an opportunity for the public now that it's become such a driving force in our schools um, to parents and um, members of the community to uh, come in and have a conversation with us about their thoughts about the technology plan. Um, if they're unable to attend the two meetings, and unfortunately the meeting last night had to be um, rescheduled due to the parking, and we're actually quite leery of rescheduling it at this point right now. We sort of wanna wait and see how the parking situation works out um, till probably the middle of next week before we look at when it would be the right time to reschedule it. However, um, if I've already gotten response from one member of the community, and I would welcome anyone who feels like they want to comment on it and you know can't wait till we reschedule or can't make the reschedule date to certainly um, to email me and um, we will take those things into consideration when we meet to finalize the plan and we'll be presenting to the committee I believe at the next uh, school committee meeting um, uh, again it's very similar to what you saw last year but this year we wanted to take um, input in. We've already had input from teachers. We have a technology committee in the district that means we wanted to take um, information and feedback from parents. You'll get out your presentation to us early enough. Of course I Thank do. you. <laughs> All right, and I, th I think the last thing that I have is just reminding everyone about the forum discussion. Actually, this discussion is going to occur on Saturday the 28th of February. Uh, it's called Unequal Justice, the Consequences of Race and Class in Our Criminal Justice System. This beginning of discussions around race and class comes out of the vigil that we had for Black Lives Matter. And uh, the, it has many co-sponsors uh, for this program, Arlington Public Schools being one of them, and the Arlington Human Rights Commission, of course, and Arlington International Film Festival, League of Women Voters of Arlington, Mystic Valley Branch of NAACP, St. Agnes Parish, and, and the list actually is growing. It is Saturday night, February 28th, from seven to nine in the town hall. All right, that's it. Thank you.
Uh, right now, uh, the consent agenda, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant number 15097 dated January 22nd, 2015 in the amount of $774,874.77. Approval of draft minutes, school committee meeting January 22nd, 2015. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, Subcommittee, liaison uh, reports and announcements, policies and procedure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if I just may on the consent, I just wanted to note one thing. I was looking at the minutes from our last meeting on January 22nd. And under monthly financial reports, it says Ms. Johnson reported the budget was on track and the good news was so far no snow costs. <laughs> that was literally on January 22nd. I, uh, unbelievable. She won't say that again. <laughs> so, Paul, <laughs> thank you. Uh, policies and procedures met last night. Uh, we discussed uh, with Dr. Bodie and Mr. Spiegel um, the new uh, maternity paternity changes in the in the Mass Law that came into effect uh, earlier this year. Will actually come into effect on April 7th of this year, and what uh, implications uh, for our policies uh, that will have, uh, and we are scheduled to speak with uh, our legal counsel just on, on that because our um, old FMLA policy seems to be a little bit outdated. Um, we also discussed, um, Mr. Schlickman brought up the idea of remote participation given uh, um, some of the members, uh, Dr. Ampey, for example, tonight and, and for future meetings, whether or not we could exercise that option um, under the Newtown Meeting Law. Um, we, we can, and, and it was voted by the Board of Selectmen, and it was in fact voted by this body um, in December of 2011. So uh, I don't think we have any, any problems with, with having, say, Dr. Allison Ampey come in via telephone, as long as a quorum here is present. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there has to be some, it has to be part of the uh, agenda, agenda notification, if possible, if we know a hand uh, ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, to just let the public know that a member would be, and it has to be a legitimate reason, not just that you decide to stay home, but right. yeah. you want to watch a football game or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there are, there are specific right. reasons right. why it would be exercised, yeah. Excellent. And that's what we discussed last time. Right. Thank you. That's it? Yep. Uh, curriculum instruction and assessment accountability. Dr. Ampey is not here. Is there anyone from that committee that? Uh, we haven't met. Okay, thank you. Facilities, Mr. Thielman? We meet on March 19th. Okay. Uh, special study group with superintendent's evaluation. I think we would plan on meeting at the end of October, uh, January, and for some reason we didn't snow make out. it. I mean, snow. Snow. We'll blame snow for everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I will yeah, be. Sure it was snow. Okay. <laughs> I'll be talking to Dr. Bodhi about that and to the subcommittee. We'll hopefully we'll be, have something to report at our next meeting. Uh, School committee, human rights commission, and joint subcommittee. Snow, uh, snow again. Mm -hmm. uh, does any member have any announcements they would like to share with the uh, committee? Uh, what about budget and community community relations? I'm sorry, budget. You, you missed community relations and budget. Did I skip it? Yeah. I apologize. Community relations. We will be meeting Wednesday, February uh, Wednesday, February 25th at 5:30 p.m. in this beloved room. <laughs> Thank you. I apologize. I skipped right over both of them. Budget. Yeah. Um, we are attempting to uh, find a meeting time uh, just so everyone is aware. We do have uh, the Budget Revenue Task Force is the Monday after break. So that's uh, not this coming Monday, but the next Monday, 6 o'clock in the uh, town hall. Um, and I think we also forwarded everyone the FinCom date is basically a month later on March 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be at 7.45 at the, we all get to go into the new police station. Oh, fun. <laughs> Ooh, nice. It'll be at the community, but um, we don't, budget does not yet have a meeting set up. Mm -hmm. okay. Seven, I'm sorry. It, oh, it's the 25th, <coughs> FinCom, the presentation. The 25th? No, oh, is that what you said? Or the no, it's the 23rd of March. Oh, 23rd. I'm sorry. Someone else said a different date. Okay, thanks. Do we post that our, ourselves because it's a joint meeting or did, does each no, group post it? No, they FinCom post it. They post it. We need to post as well. Okay. You think we need if to? We, if we, we're meeting as a group as well. If, if we, yeah. Oh, we're not. We're just invited. We're just presenting. 
Gotcha. You but we, but there will be a possibility of a quorum. Okay, yes, whatever. There usually is. I've never posted before, but I can. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've ever. Mm -hmm. Does any member have any announcements at this time? Anyone else have any Should announcements? Just the board <laughs> okay, this time uh, the committee will enter executive session to conduct strategy, strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union, which if held in open meeting may have a detrimental effect to discuss, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. A second? Second. Roll call. Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 We're all we, will, we will uh, ex exit uh, executive session only for the purpose of adjournment.